Suppose one day you turn on your cold water tap and the water catches fire. Problem? This is just one of the many potentially harmful side effects of global fracking. Fracking, or hydraulic fracturing, is a means to exploit natural gas reserves and oil reserves which are hidden beneath hard shale rock deep underground. The technology involves drilling into the rock and injecting a high-pressure solution in order to create fractures and unleash all that bounteous gas and oil. In this solution is included a mixture of toxic chemicals and carcinogens such as hydrochloric acid. These chemicals subsequently reappear in the local water supply. This resulted in one of the most extraordinary scenes in the documentary about fracking, Gasland, in which a householder set his tap water on fire. But industry lobbyists tell us that fracking shale gas provides a cleaner source of energy than traditional fossil fuels, such as coal and oil. They tell us that it stimulates growth and provides jobs. Lobbyists are organised in a network of think tanks and business groups from the American Enterprise Institute, a business-led neoconservative think tank which provided many of the personnel behind the last Bush administration, to the Natural Gas Alliance, a coalition of gas industries. They have political support. Obama heaped praise on the natural gas boom in the United States, as the Washington Post reported, during a State of the Union address last year. David Cameron says that fracking is good for the UK, shown here by The Guardian. The Guardian also reported that government officials have collaborated with the industry to help manage public opposition, and the British government has changed the law to allow fracking to take place under people's homes without their permission. The industry is powerful. In the UK, they were able to fund a supposedly independent task force headed by former New Labour Minister Lord Smith to claim that fracking could be safe and healthy, provided certain conditions were met, again shown here by The Guardian. Ranged against the practice are international campaigns, from Greenpeace to the global frackdown, and in the UK, frack off. Some landowners and a sceptical public whose protests have often put a spanner in the fracking industry's works. What is the truth about fracking, and how much of the truth does the media tell us? First of all, the pro-fracking consensus, while limited in the UK press, where newspapers such as The Mirror, The Guardian and The Independent feature regular criticisms of the industry, it's much broader in the United States. Some right-wing publications are worried that the pro-fracking consensus isn't holding up. The Washington Times complains that fracking has become such a dirty word that no one even credits it with making America the number one producer of oil and energy in the world. But the complaint is unfair. Over at the Washington Post, Robert Samuelson is exulting in the country's oil and gas boom and calling for investment to expand production dramatically. Even the supposedly progressive national public radio is watering at the mouth over America's next economic boom, which it says could be lying underground. CNN gives the right-wing historian Niall Ferguson space to champion a fracking bonanza. The New York Times claims that the shale boom is regrowing industry in the Rust Belt. Even the usually sensible middle-of-the-road think tank, the Brookings Institute, gushes about the economic benefits of fracking, pointing to savings for consumers and profits for industry. The industry case is supported by environment contrarians like Bjorn Lomborg, who argued in Slate magazine that carbon dioxide emissions in the US are at their lowest level in 20 years, and business publications like Forbes, which exult in the economic booms allegedly produced by fracking. The UK business magazine, The Economist, says that American oil men, by drilling through shale rock, have brought energy prices crashing down for consumers. This resembles the outcome of a successful PR offensive the industry shifting the conversation away from the health and environmental risks to the mouthwatering promises of material gains. So how much growth does fracking actually promise? First of all, many of the claims coming from governments and industry don't stack up. In the US, a group of researchers across six states found that the number of jobs created is far below industry claims and remains a small share of overall employment. In the UK, the government claims that 74,000 jobs would be created in the UK by allowing fracking to proceed. But as The Guardian reports, this figure came from the energy company Centrica. 
The government's own figures suggest a peak of 16,000 to 32,000 jobs. In an economy with over 31 million people in work, that is a minuscule impact. As to energy prices, as The Guardian again reports, even Lord Brown, the boss of the fracking company Quadrilla, points out that it will make no difference to energy bills. The UK Energy Secretary Ed Davey also contradicts his political bosses by saying that there is no price reduction coming. The much-wanted decline in US energy prices have little to do with shale fracking and everything to do with a general glut of energy on the market. In fact, for fracking to be economically sustainable, the Financial Times reports industry leaders saying that the prices will have to rise to about double present levels. So, if all the headlines enthusing about fracking's contribution to economic growth are based on industry myths and exaggerations, what about the threat to human health and to the ecosphere? First of all, it's important to note that the industry claims that its practices aren't dangerous. Quadrilla claims that it uses no hazardous or toxic components. It then goes on to list among the chemical compounds it uses, biocides and hydrochloric acid, which are conventionally considered both hazardous and toxic. The industry is supported in its claims by pundits like Jeremy Carl of the right-wing Hoover Institution, who has given space on CNN to claim that the strong consensus of research on hydraulic fracturing is that overall it is good for the environment. This is supported by John Hanger, former secretary of Pennsylvania's Department of Environmental Protection, who writes for The Guardian that fracking, in addition to providing a durable economic bonanza and cash for millions of Americans who leased their land, was also likely to displace environmentally dirtier fuels like coal, its natural nemesis. So the claim of fracking supports in the media is that it is a comparatively clean energy source that is responsible for reducing carbon emissions. What does the research actually show? First of all, a big part of the lobby's case is that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change suggested in one of its reports that since shale gas has a lower carbon footprint than coal or oil, it could be used to transition to clean, renewable fuels. However, as one of the lead authors of the report pointed out in an interview with the website Responding to Climate Change, the lobbyists are exploiting and exaggerating a minor theme in one of the panel's reports, and that the emissions coming from the drilling sites, combined with the expanded use of gas, especially in industry, would result in a dangerous global temperature increase of between 3 and 5 degrees Celsius. But even that assumes that fracking is for shale gas. In fact, it is not just for gas, as lobbyists like to claim, but also for oil. In February this year, as the Wall Street Journal reports, fracking accounted for 49% of total domestic oil production. And this tendency is going global, with the Financial Times reporting that up to 140 billion barrels of oil could be exploited by fracking. Although the FT doesn't mention that the research company behind it is funded by the energy industry. Yet even sticking with the subject of fracking for gas, the International Energy Agency's 2011 World Energy Outlook report suggested that even if we were entering a golden age of gas, the result would likely be a dangerous and totally unsustainable 3.5 degrees Celsius global increase in temperature. Now, this is important because news reports often assume that shale gas is climate friendly. The US network PBS recently produced a long documentary about the effects of fracking, which didn't mention the climate impact at all. There's also the immediate effect on human health. There are now dozens of studies whose findings are glibly overlooked by the Environment Protection Agency and by pro-fracking pundits, which show that toxic chemical compounds have been making their way into the water supply. In Pennsylvania, methane has been found in the water, and the Scientific American reports that this most likely came from fracking. Meanwhile, the New York Times covered the flow of wastewater from fracking into rivers that supply drinking water and disclosed official documents from the Environmental Protection Agency and the drilling industry, which suggest that radioactive materials cannot be eliminated from the waste. And that is even if there aren't regular spills and accidents polluting the water supply. As the Wall Street Journal reported earlier this year, the Exxon fracking subsidiary XTO is still locked in a legal battle with the Pennsylvania Attorney General after having spilled 
57,000 gallons of wastewater into the local river. Such spills and accidents happen a lot. The effects of this on humans are exposed in a range of health studies. The chemicals involved damage the skin, the eyes, the immune system, the cardiovascular system and the kidneys. They can cause cancers and disrupt the endocrine system. Astonishingly, research into the advisory committees that oversee fracking decisions at national and local government levels shows that they contain not one single health expert. A trickle of this evidence is beginning to make it into the news. But it's nothing compared to the flood of articles glorying in the supposed economic benefits and downplaying the risks. And that's the fault not just of the news organisations and the PR companies that they're linked to, but also the government agencies that support fracking and not the legitimate science.